Hey everyone, Gio here, and welcome back to 50 and Beyond. Um, I thought I would take some time because I've had a lot of people actually ask me uh, the question, tell me about your heart attack, tell me what happened, tell me what it felt like, etc. So, here's my heart attack story. Um, on November 9th, 2017 is the date that this happened. Um, Pretty much it was a normal day. I woke up that morning. Um, what I did notice and what I'm going to talk about first is my symptoms. Um, again, I felt like it was a normal day. Um, most of my adult life I've had uh, periods of time where I've suffered from acid reflux, uh, so heartburn. Um, so it's not uncommon to, to sort of have that feeling. And when I woke up on that particular day um, after I had breakfast and before I went to my office, I was feeling like I was having heartburn. I was just not feeling, I wasn't feeling 100%, but I was like, yeah, this is heartburn. It's not feeling so great. So I popped a couple uh, Tums, went to work. And while I was in my office, I continued working and I was just feeling that very uncomfortable feeling that you sometimes get with acid reflux. And I was drinking lots of water because usually if I drink a little bit of cold water, that'll help alleviate the symptoms. Um, on this particular day, that really wasn't happening for me. It wasn't working. Um, in my office, in my drawer, I had some more antacids, but unfortunately I only had one. So I took that, drank some more water, and then I decided to leave work early a little bit. Um, wasn't feeling great, but I was scheduled to have dinner uh, with a colleague of mine and some other people. And um, so I actually called him on the phone uh, and asked him if he was, he was at home and I said look I'm gonna swing by your house before we go to dinner and I left my office and I drove and on my way there I actually had a moment where I thought in my head this is just really uncomfortable I wonder if maybe I should think about going to the hospital and I put it out of my head being stubborn the way that I am and I drove to his house, went inside, and when I walked in, I actually joked with him and I said, hey, I'm either having a heart attack or the worst heartburn I've ever had. And I asked him if he had any antacids. Unfortunately, he didn't. Um, but I took a bottle of water and I drank some more water and we were sitting on his couch having a conversation. And, um, and then I asked him, I was like, where, where are we all going to dinner tonight? And he said that we were all gonna go to a Chinese restaurant. And I sort of thought better of that. And I thought, well, if I'm having really bad heartburn, I don't think Chinese food sounds very good to me. So I bowed out of dinner and I said, hey, I'm just going to go home. I'm not feeling so great. And I left and I drove to my house, which is about a 20 minute drive. Uh, when I got home, I immediately went to the medicine cabinet and I took a couple more antacids. And I went and sat on my couch. I was feeling a little tired. Uh, and I laid down on the couch and I actually fell asleep. I slept for about, I'd say about 45 minutes or so. Uh, and then when I woke up, I got up and I stood up and I went to the bathroom uh, to, to use the bathroom. And uh, I was still feeling that really uh, intense feeling of heartburn. But this time the feeling was a little bit different. In addition to feeling like I was having really bad acid reflux, um, I was getting other symptoms. I was having pain in my shoulders and pain in my neck. And I was also having some radiating pain in my left arm. And immediately all of the bells went off in my head and I said, well, this sounds a lot like things I've seen or symptoms I've heard of a potential heart attack. So of course I was scared a little bit, uh, but um, don't follow my lead on this. I chose not to call 911, which was stupid. I should have, uh, but I got in my car and drove as fast as I could. I put on my emergency lights and I just booked myself because I don't live too far uh, from a hospital. And I drove to the emergency room, and this is where the story gets a little interesting, but I pulled up to the emergency room. There was like nowhere to park. They actually have valet parking at this hospital, and I pulled up and the valet attendant wasn't there. And I got out of my car and I'm looking around and all of a sudden I see the valet attendant pull up and I actually walked over to his car and I said, hey, that's my car over there. I handed him the keys and I said, I might be having something wrong with my heart. And he was like, go, go, don't worry about it. So I walked into the hospital. Um, there, there's security when you walk in and uh, the place where you go check in. And as soon as I told them that I was having chest pains and some the symptoms I was having, uh, they had me immediately go in the back. And a young lady nurse 
uh, did a quick EKG on me. And as soon as she finished the EKG, she ripped the paper off, handed it to somebody else. She asked me to stand up and go to this other little area where there was another nurse where I sat down and she was literally just about to take my blood pressure and my temperature when um, somebody wheeled a wheelchair up behind me and actually made a statement to that nurse that they, we have a room prepped, we have a code red. And again, sort of, I laughed a little bit and I looked at the nurse and I was like, wow, that sounds very serious. And she looked at me very seriously and said, no, sir, it's you. Uh, to which the person in the wheelchair, uh, the gentleman was very kind and he said, hey, sir, can you stand up? Can you please sit here for me? And I was, okay. And I sat in that chair and from that moment on, um, it was just sort of crazy. So what ended up happening at that point is they wheeled me into a room where immediately they put me on a uh, bed. I'm not sure how many people were in that room, but I know there was one main doctor calling the shots. There were several other people in there, nurses, perhaps other doctors, I'm not sure. Um, and they were all literally taking all of my clothes off me, hooking me up to things, poking me, sticking me with needles. I had a couple different needles go into my arms and the one doctor looked at me and you know he said hey just want to let you know yes you are having a heart attack but we're going to take care of you you're going to be okay and immediately when i heard that i was having a heart attack it sunk in and i was pretty scared to be honest and they're all asking me questions and there's just all kinds of commotion happening um and there was one nurse who was at a computer and she was typing away and they're yelling stuff. And I wish I knew her name and maybe she sees this video, uh, but um, she stopped what she was doing and she walked over to the side of the bed and she grabbed my hand, she held my hand and she looked at me and very seriously she said, I just want you to know you're gonna be fine. You're in one of Broward County's number one heart hospitals we're going to take care of you. And for whatever reason, I just sort of calmed down and I totally believed her in that moment that, okay, I'm going to be okay. So I sort of relaxed into it. The realization hit me. Of course, I was still very nervous. Um, they called in a cardiologist who came in. This By this point, um, from the point of entering the hospital to the point of me being in an operating room and having an angioplasty done, was probably 40 minutes or so. Um, in the meantime, when I left my house and I was driving there, I called my, my friend and I said to him that I, where I was going, uh, this was a friend I was supposed to be having dinner with, they were actually at dinner, and um, thankfully, best friend in the world, um, he stopped what he was doing and got in his car and drove to the hospital. He uh, made his way into the back like minutes before they wheeled me out of the room to go up into surgery uh, where he stayed and waited. So that was very kind of him. Um, to me, at that point, I was wide awake during the procedure. So let me talk about that for a minute. I had what's called an angioplasty. Uh, it turned out that I had a 99% blockage in one of the main arteries going into my heart. Um, and my angioplasty was done up through the groin. Um, I've heard that they also do it, they can do it through your wrist now, uh, but for whatever reason this doctor did it through my groin, which was fine. Um, I was totally awake during the procedure, lying on the table, uh, when I was wheeled into that room, they keep operating rooms very, very cold. I'm completely naked, I'm wheeled into the room, uh, some nurse comes over and says, hey, we're going to shave you, <laughs> whatever. Uh, they shave you down below in a, in a part of your uh, groin area. Um, and I remember laying on that table and just shivering, 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 like just, it was so cold. And um, uh, one of the nurses came over and said, we're going to give you something in your IV. You're going to, you might get a taste of metal in your mouth. They, they were very kind and talked me through each thing that they were doing. Um, she gave me that injection. I remember getting that little bit of a funny taste and like within a second, it was like, whoo warmth. I stopped shaking. Um, so that was a type of medication that calmed me down, relaxed me, sort of put me in a twilight if, you, if I've heard. Um, then the cardiologist that did the procedure, uh, he talked to me through the procedure. Um, and I will say there was one moment where I was lying on the table and I believe it's the moment that he released the, um, the blockage that was in my artery because I remember um, when he was doing the procedure, I had this feeling of just like a, 
the best way to describe it, I hate to say it, but it was like a whoosh, like a ah, like a just a wow, like a, a rush. Um, and then he went in and put a stent in uh, and then closed me up. Uh, they put a compression bandage on me and they wheeled me down into uh, a room where for the first, I, forgive me, but I believe it was two hours, but it might have been four hours after the procedure uh, where I had to be immobilized. Basically, I had to lie perfectly still. I couldn't move around. I couldn't sit up. I had to be lying. Uh, and that's because they go through the main artery uh, in your groin and they open a pretty big, good size hole. Uh, and they put a really tight compression bandage on you and it and you have to have time for that area of your body to start healing and clot uh, and if you move around you risk all kinds of things apparently um, so I spent the night in the hospital that night of course being in a hospital is never a pleasant experience because you really can't sleep um, they constantly coming in poking prodding you taking blood samples etc uh, the following day uh, the cardiologist came to visit me about halfway through that day uh, and he removed the compression bandage. Here's what I'm going to say if you ever find yourself in this situation. The removal of the compression bandage was the most painful excruciating thing of the entire heart attack. I sympathize now with women. Uh, if you're watching this and you're a lady and you've given birth, maybe I feel a little bit about what it might have felt like. That bandage being removed with a layer of skin and the remainder of hair down below was just absolutely horrific. <laughs> but it had to be done, I guess. So that was removed. Um, he had checked me out uh, and he felt confident that I could probably be released from the hospital that day. Unfortunately, in my case though, he had ordered a echocardiogram to be done on me and I guess they were backed up in the labs where they were doing those procedures and I ended up not having my echo um, done until about 9.30 p.m. that night. So what that meant was a second night in the hospital, um, unfortunately for me. Um, however, I will say I was at Memorial Regional Hospital in Hollywood, Florida, and the entire staff there was phenomenal. Um, all of the nurses were great. All of the orderlies were great. All of the people that came in, uh, everybody was just really, really, really nice and uh, very informative. Uh, and um, so I can't say enough good things about my experience in the hospital with the exception of the ability to sleep because in that 48 hours that I was there I slept maybe six not even six maybe four four to six hours you just can't get a good night's sleep in a hospital and of course they want you to rest after you've had this procedure well the good news for me was that my heart attack although severe with a 99% blockage, luckily I got myself to the hospital at the onset of the symptoms. And even though I was symptomatic that day, uh, my symptoms lasted for roughly eight hours um, or longer, maybe eight to 10 hours. It, apparently it's not uncommon for people who are having similar symptoms to myself to really just kind of brush it off. And they may go a day or two or three days with those types of symptoms in uh, a situation where uh, they may not come out of it. In other words, as you're waiting, the longer you wait to get treatment, the damage is being caused to your heart because your heart muscles are being deprived of oxygen and etc. So in my case, I was very lucky. I had very minimal, minimal damage done to my heart. Um, so that meant uh, a pretty decent recovery. This happened on November 9th. Today is now February uh, 22nd of 2018. I feel amazing. When I went into the hospital that day, I was overweight. I weighed 266 pounds. As of today, I weigh 234 pounds. Um, this was a wake-up call for me. I've made drastic changes to my eating habits since this. I'm eating a, a heart-healthy diet. I'm not doing any crazy fad diet. I've just changed the way I eat and I've changed the foods I'm eating. Um, I've had fast food once since getting out of the hospital and even that was healthy fast food. Um, but I really made a concerted effort to eat healthy, uh, to focus on uh, foods that are low in saturated fats, low in carbohydrates, high in proteins, lots of vegetables, lots of fruits. And to be honest with you, I'm actually eating more food now than I was prior to my heart attack and I'm feeling healthier. 
Um, the unfortunate thing is after a heart attack, you go on a regimen of medication. I now have to take, uh, currently I'm still taking six pills in the morning. Um, one is a baby aspirin, one is a medication that is a platelet thinner. Um, I'm on two different statins, one for cholesterol and the other for triglycerides because both my good cholesterol was low and my bad cholesterol was high and my triglycerides were high. The good news is I've had blood work done since then. All of my levels are in a normal range, uh, so that's great news. Um, and um, uh, th so anyway, those are the main medications that I'm taking. Uh, in addition, I'm taking two different pills for blood pressure. I was on blood pressure medication prior to my heart attack for a period of almost three years um, where my blood pressure had been elevated. Um, my medication that I was on is the same that I'm currently on. However, my dosages are now lower after my heart attack than they were prior to my heart attack. And I do check my blood pressure every single day. And the good news for me is that my blood pressure has been in normal to actually lower than normal range consistently on a daily best basis with a couple of exceptions. And that's because I suffer from what's called white coat syndrome is whenever I walk into a doctor's office, I get nervous, I get a little bit hypertensive. So my blood pressure elevates and uh, they're all aware of that. So uh, I have a blood pressure machine that actually keeps track and I keep a chart so that when I visit the cardiologist or my regular doctor, I can bring them two weeks worth of uh, measurements so they can see uh, that everything's working. So two blood pressure pills and then at night I take one blood pressure pill and again another um, uh, platelet thinner, uh, blood thinner. Um, so those are good. Now, the bad thing about being on that medication is uh, last night I had a little incident happen here at home. That's why I've got this on my thumb. I was slicing vegetables with a mandolin. Highly recommend you do not use one of those. It was my first time using one. I thought, oh, this will be great. I'm doing all this stuff with veggies. I went and bought one. Um, anyway, I ended up slicing a big chunk of my thumb off. Not a good thing, especially when you're on blood thinners. Two hours after trying to bandage it up myself, it was still bleeding, so I ended up having to go to an urgent care center where uh, they put some, um, they have uh, this foam stuff that they put on that actually has medication in it that helps your blood clot uh, and helps heal. So be very careful if you've had a heart attack and you're watching this, uh, be very, very careful around sharp knives because blood thinners make it very difficult to stop bleeding. Um, but anyway, other than that, though, I will say losing the 30 plus pounds that I've lost so far, I feel great. Uh, since the heart attack, I feel great. Um, I feel that prior to the heart attack and probably a few months leading up to the heart attack, I was symptomatic of many things and I want to share those with you. There was, I had noticed a, an increased amount of fatigue uh, that I was feeling. I had noticed that there were times where I felt some sort of pressure in the chest area, but I, again, I pushed it off as to, oh, I'm just not that healthy, or I'm not feeling that great, or it's aches and pains. Um, my job, I work on my feet. I'm a photographer, a videographer, so I'm constantly moving around. So it's not that I lead a sedentary life and I'm carrying around a you know, 10, 15 pound camera above my head, bending, slooping, all of that. So. It's not uncommon to have aches and pains and things of that nature. Um, however, post <laughs> the heart attack, all of those aches and pains that I was feeling in the months leading up to it, um, I don't have those same aches and pains anymore. So I think some of those feelings that I was having were symptomatic and certainly a 99% blockage does not happen overnight. Um, I guess it could. Uh, but in general, after speaking with my cardiologist, uh, the fact is that that blockage probably took a long period of time to get there. And as it was getting worse, it's, you know, same thing if you've got a hose in your backyard and you're kinking that hose, the water is not going through it very well or just trickling out. Well, that's what was happening. And, it, and you just generally, that affects all kinds of things. Um, so subsequently, after the heart attack, a couple things that I have noticed uh, that were a little strange at first was because now I do have good blood flow through my body and I'm on these blood thinners, which keeps everything moving. Um, there were times where I would have these periods of, or a feeling of like euphoria 
or uh, brain, I, it's hard to describe, not brain fog, but like just sometimes a tingly feeling or a tingling in my fingers or in my feet or uh, moments like that. And I chalk that up to feel those feelings for the co first couple weeks after having the heart attack is my body getting back used to uh, the right amount of oxygen and the right amount of blood that's supposed to be flowing through it. Um, so those feelings were relatively normal and according to my cardiologist normal. Because I am on all this medication, I do also notice sometimes that if I am sitting for a period of time and I stand up quickly, I might get a little bit dizzy. Uh, that can be caused because of the blood pressure medication I'm on as well as the blood thinning medication. Um, so I share that with you as well. So why did I do this video? Well, a lot of people asked me what, what my experience was. And my hope is that if you're watching this and you have not had a heart attack, and maybe you're symptomatic or you had any of the symptoms that I described that I had, go to your doctor, get yourself checked out, get blood work done. If I can save one person from going through what I went through, then I will feel great about that. Uh, secondly, it's really important to note, I'm not a medical professional, I'm not a doctor, this is just my experience, so please, by no means is everybody's heart attack experience the same. This is my heart attack story. Um, thankfully, it was not as bad as it could have been, and the fact is, I'm here talking to you today. So ever since November 9th, I have a new lease on life, and every single day that I wake up in the morning, I feel grateful to be here, I feel grateful to be alive, and I really feel like I have a lot more to do in this world. Even though I'm 50 years old, I hope to be around maybe another 50 years, at least. Uh, so anyway, I appreciate you watching. Uh, if you have any other questions or you have feedback, please put them down below. And if you could, give me a thumbs up, even if I've got this on my thumb. Uh, give me a like and please subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be posting a lot more inf information on here. I'm calling the channel 50 and beyond because that's what's happened to me right now. I am beyond 50, I am living, and I am proof that after a heart attack, things aren't so bad. Thanks for watching, bye everyone.